Hello, this is Martin Brennan, Product Manager of Imagineer Systems, and welcome to this tutorial on 3D placement with HitFilm Express and Mocha. HitFilm Express is FX Home's free version of the software that allows you to purchase additional features where required, and Mocha is one of those features. So I'm going to take you through an example of solving a camera in Mocha, and then using that data to place some of HitFilm Express's bundled 3D effects into a scene. And of course, everything I show you today can also be done in HitFilm Pro. So let's get started. So here we are with HitFilm 3 Express, and I'm going to start by loading up a scene here. So in this project, we've got the media I want to use, and we've got our empty timeline. So by default, HitFilm 3 Express doesn't come with Mocha, but when you purchase the additional feature, you'll have the options to solve with Mocha HitFilm in the new panel, and you'll also have some right-click options when you have this piece of footage in a composition. So you can right-click and create a new composite shot with the footage, and we'll set that up as the default. And this creates a composition with that footage layer in place. So this footage is from Pond5, and it's a nice aerial shot of a train station. And what we want to do is add kind of a Ghostbuster-y kind of storm cloud hovering over the top of the building to get a bit of ominous look going on in this shot. So what we want to do is take this into Mocha and solve the shot using the planes that we already have in the scene. So what I'm going to do is right-click the layer in the composite shot, and this gives me the option to open with Mocha Hit Film. As I showed you before, we could just create a new solve up here, but that doesn't automatically load in the footage that you've got. If you've already got a composition made, you can immediately load the footage into Mocha Hit Film into the new project dialog, so you don't have to go and hunt for it separately. So let's do that now. Okay, so here we are inside Mocha Hit Film. And we've already got the new project dialog up from the footage that we sent from HitFilm Express. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And this has already exists, so I'm just going to override it. And here we have our shot now inside Mocha. OK, so to perform a camera solve in Mocha, we first have to track planes in the scene using the Mocha Planner Tracker. And a plane in a scene is something like this front of the building or the side of the tower here or the ground area around here, or these planes over here. The idea is to find at least two non-coplanar planes in the scene. And non-coplanar just basically means not on the same plane, so I couldn't just track this area and this area because they're on the same plane. So I'm going to use the front of the building here and the front of the tower back here to get some kind of parallax going so I can create a camera solve. Now, when tracking in Mocha, it's usually best to find the largest point that the texture exists. So I'm going to come to the end of my shot, where these buildings are biggest, and draw my shapes here. And then I'm going to track backwards from that point. So let's start first with the front of the station building here. I'm going to draw a reasonably large shape just around the edge of this plane. And I'm going to add this box over here just because it's on the same plane as the station. So I'm going to right click my tangents here on the X-Bind and just smooth them out a little bit by just dragging there. And we'll turn on the mat so we can see this a little bit better. So I could probably add a little bit outside the edge of here. When you're doing shapes for tracking planes inside Mocha, it's often better to actually have a little bit outside the edge of the plane so Mocha knows how that plane exists in space. Here it's probably not going to matter too much because we've got a lot of texture information to use in the shot. Now that I've drawn this shape, it's also important to see how this plane is going to be moving through the shot. So I'm just going to scrub backwards through my timeline, and I'm going to see how that building is going to be covered by anything else in the scene. And just at the edge here, we can start to see these trees coming in to block out part of the plane at the bottom. So I'm going to observe that and come back to the end of my shot, where I drew the spline, and we probably are okay here, but I'm just to be safe going to move it up a little bit to avoid the possibility of hitting those trees. Now, because this building is turning significantly towards the camera in perspective, I'm going to make sure that I turn on perspective in my track parameters. I'm also going to change my minimum percentage of pixels to about 90, just to make the track more accurate. The higher this value is, the more accurate the track is going to be, and the smaller the value is, the faster it's going to be. Finally, before we start tracking, I'm going to turn on the surface and the grid. 
So the surface is used to help you visualize the plane a little bit better in the scene, and it's also used to export the data later when we do the camera solve. We do this by distorting the surface to the approximate plane that you're tracking in the shot. So I can see here I'm moving around my surface, and we're going to set it to about how it's projected in perspective in this building. The grid is just used to help visualize that a bit better so you can see a more obvious plane going on outside the surface. So I've adjusted my surface to sit approximately on the side of that building, and we can now use this to help look at the track as we're tracking to make sure nothing is drifting or going off kilter. So let's start tracking backwards. We're going to click the track backwards button here, and we'll start to see that spline and the surface and grid moving along with the building as it tracks backwards in space. So with this is going to track a fairly long sequence, so I'm just going to speed it up and we'll come back when the track is done. Okay, so that's the track finished, so we'll just scrub through the timeline and see how our surface is doing. And we're pretty happy with that. We've got a little bit of a skew happening here, but that's actually probably my surface. If I just adjust that a little bit, we'll see that looks correct now in perspective. So we've got one plane tracked now, but as we're doing a camera solve, we need those two separate planes to get the parallax necessary to solve the camera. So I'm going to go ahead now and come to the end of my shot and draw a new shape around the side of the tower. So first of all, let's name our first layer. I'm going to call this station side like so, and now we can start to draw our second layer. So for this, let's just zoom in a little bit. I'm going to hold down the Z key and zoom in a little bit here, and I'll turn off the surface and grid for the moment of the other layer so I can see what I'm doing, and we're going to draw a new X spline, and we're going to come up here and just draw it around the edge of the tower here. You can see I'm getting a little bit of that outside edge as I did before, and again, this is just to capture a little bit more of the outer plane so we know how it's moving in space. We probably don't want to draw it all the way out here because this side of the building is a separate plane again. So what I'm drawing here is capturing that entire planar area and just a little bit of the edge outside. Now, like I did for the other layer, I'm going to turn on perspective because this is a perspective track and it's already set to 90% pixels here. This actually changes by default when you draw the shape. The shape size actually affects how big this value is to begin with, and that's just an automated process that Mocha is guessing at that the performance might need. So you can just alter that afterwards, but at the moment it's set it exactly how I want it. I'm also going to do what I did last time with the previous layer and just quickly scrub through the timeline and see how that building is moving through the shot because I want to make sure that anything in the foreground that may be occluding isn't going to interfere with my shape. And we can see here as we scrub through that the foreground building is just blocking the bottom of that tower a little bit. So I'm going to move my shape up just a little bit to avoid that problem. Now obviously there's another way to do this if you wanted to. You could draw a foreground mask in the front of this and it will actually occlude that and ignore it. So for example if I just quickly drew a new shape here, this mask is going to now be in the foreground because everything in the stack is based on nearest and furthest. So anything at the bottom of the stack is furthest from the camera and anything at the top of the stack is closest to the camera. So this by default is now a new foreground shape that's going to block the shape that I've drawn for the tower. So if I come back to my tower shape and turn on selected track mats, you'll see that that foreground layer is now cutting a hole out of my tower layer. And this means that it's going to ignore this space when it comes to the tracking time. So this is another way you can use to avoid any occlusion problems when you're tracking. So I'm just going to delete that layer, and while we're here, let's just name this one Tower Track. And now we can start to track. So like we did with the previous layer, let's just turn on the surface and grid, and I'm just going to quickly line this up approximately to the side of the building here. So we'll just match the approximate perspective, like so. And I'll push this up a little bit so we've got more of a square. about there, so that'll do for the time being. 
It's important to note when you're adjusting the surface that these adjustments aren't set in stone. You can go ahead and adjust the surface at any point during the tracking process. So this is really useful. You can set up a, an initial surface and then tweak it later and it doesn't affect the tracking data in any way. So finally, before we start, we need to make sure that we turn off the tracking cog that we've already done. So the station side one that we did before has this tracking cog process on. So I'm going to click that off just so that it doesn't track again. You can actually track multiple layers at once if you want to, but in this case, I only care about doing the track for the tower because I've already done the station. So we'll select that one. We've got our cog on and now we can begin tracking. So we'll start tracking backwards. And like last time, we can start to see that grid, surface and spline following correctly along with the side of the building. So again, like last time, I'm going to speed up the recording so that we don't have to follow throughout the entire track and I'll meet you on the other side. Okay, so we now have that second track done and again, I'm gonna scrub through the timeline and see how that looks. And I'm pretty happy with that, so we can leave that one alone. So now it's time to do the actual camera solve. And for that, we need to go over to the camera solve tab. So the camera solve module is where we take the tracking data that we've just done and turn it into the 3D camera. For this, we need to select both our layers and then choose the type of camera that we want to solve with. We can either get Mocha to guess the type of camera it is by using auto, and this is a slower process, but it will try and find the best result for you. We then have pan, tilt, zoom, and this is only if your camera is sitting on something like a tripod or a locked location, and it can only pan, tilt, and zoom in the shot. And actually for this particular selection, you only need one layer because pan, tilt, zoom really only captures the plane of the camera, not the parallax in the scene. So you can get away with just tracking one layer for pan, tilt, zoom. Sometimes two or more layers helps if you've got a fairly complicated shot, but keep that in mind when you're solving for those particular shots. Next up, we have small parallax change, and this is where there's a subtle amount of motion between the foreground and the background. And this is often the case if you've got something like a handheld shot or just a very subtle motion going on. Finally, and what we're going to be using today is the large parallax change. And this is where there's a large amount of motion happening in the foreground compared to the background. Now, if you know your focal length, you can set it here. I'm going to set it by default to 35 to 70 millimeters because I'm pretty sure that's what this one is. If you're not completely sure, just check all the boxes and Mocha will do its best to guess for you. And also, if the camera is zooming at all, click on this one as well. I'm going to leave it as these settings and go ahead and click Solve. So we can see here that it's taking a little while to solve up here. We're just thinking about all the things that are going on in the scene. And this usually takes between five to 10 seconds, depending on the length of the shot. And we can see here now we've got a solve quality of 99%. And that's obviously a very good solve quality. If you get anything sort of below 80% in your solve quality, you'll probably either want to check your track to make sure the track is solid, or maybe find another layer or plane area to track with to help solve the shot a bit better. Here, we're happy with 99%, so we can now look at exporting our camera data. So when we come to export camera data, what it's going to do is generate a camera for the scene, but it's also going to generate some 3D null points for the corners of the surface that we've drawn in the shot here. So we've got the four corners of the building in the front here, and it'll generate a middle point between those four corners. And the same goes for the back tower as well. So this is where it becomes really important to set up your surface points on the right plane. It's still going to project the surface points into the scene correctly, but if you want to make it easier to line up 3D objects back in HitFilm, it's better to approximate the position of the perspective on the surfaces that you're working with. Now, because I've already lined up these surface points, I'm happy with where they are, so I'm going to go and export my camera data. And we'll go ahead and just save a HitFilm composite shot, and we'll call this something important like Station camera and we'll click save and now we can go back over to HitFilm and import that composite shot okay so now we're back in HitFilm Express we can go ahead and import that composite shot 
So we'll load it up here. We've got here station camera, or as I've typed it accidentally, station camera. And we'll load that in. And you can see here that it loads up the composite shot into our scene here. So we've got our footage sitting at the top, and then we've got a camera, and then a whole bunch of nulls generated from those surface points. So if I just go ahead and shift select all of those, you can see that those nulls are sitting in the same point areas that we drew inside Mocha. So if I drag through the timeline, you can see now that we've got a 3D scene with those nulls resting where the surface points were drawn inside Mocha. If you want to see how these points are actually positioned in 3D space, you can switch from the active camera to either one of the perspective camera where we can view our nulls over here, or we can look at something like the top view so we can actually help line up 3D objects correctly. For this particular example though, I'm just going to go back to the active camera and use the actual data we have in these nulls to paste into an effect so it positions the effect correctly where I need it. So let's go grab the effect we need. I'm going to go up to the effects panel and move down to Quick 3D and choose the Storm Cloud effect. Now Storm Cloud is an effect that comes free with HitFilm 3 Express, but some of the effects you'll see in here are purchasable upgrades from the App Store. So check out what effects you can upgrade to from the free version. So I'm just going to drag that into my comp here, and we'll just make sure that's right at the top, like so. So we've got this lovely churny storm cloud effect, and now I'm going to use some of the null data to position this storm cloud correctly. Now because we want to hang this above the tower, I'm going to use one of the tower null points to help position this storm cloud. So we'll come down here to tower track center, which is up here, and I'm going to open this up, and we'll come down to transform, and I'm going to choose position and just copy that to the clipboard. And now I'm going to go back up to my effect and look up in the effect controls up here. And we'll come down to transform here, select position, and then paste that data into the right place. Now you can see at the moment it's scaled up quite a large amount. So I'm going to scale this down a little bit. So it hangs about the right spot in the scene. And I'm also going to move it up. Now that I've pasted my position, I'm going to grip my Y value and just push it above the tower to make it sit ominously above the tower there. Let's just zoom out a little bit. So now that that's in place, if we scrub the timeline, you'll see that cloud move perfectly with that tower rotation and zoom in in the right way and also rotate slightly as we get closer to the building. So this is just a quick example of how you can use HitFilm 3 Express with the additional Mocha HitFilm add-on to create 3D camera solve data for your composite shots. If you have any questions about camera solving or Mocha in general, you can go to our forums at imagineassistance.com under the support menu. Otherwise, you can email us at support at imagineersystems.com or go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash